Hello, my name is Anna Solomon, and we are going to be working together on a couple of questions from F07, the ACT from December of 2022. So first, let me share my screen so we can dive right in. It's going to be two about logarithms and one um, other question. And all right, so first, 41. And this is in December of 22, um, ACT math. The number of decibels D produced by an audio source can be modeled by the equation, equation that, where I is the sound intensity in watts per square meter of the audio source. What is the sound intensity in watts per square meter for an audio source that produces 100 decibels? This is a great example of a time when we do not need to understand what is happening. We just need to link the uh, variables to the words that they represent. All right, so let's go ahead and recopy the equation in my own soothing handwriting. So we get D equals 10 log pi over 10 to the negative 12. All right, and then, all right, what do the only variables I have are D and I, and they tell me the number of decibels D, so that's decibels, and this is usually how it's gonna be, right? Like the first letter will be the variable. And then I is the intensity. All right, so then they wanna know the intensity, so i would be solving for I, um, for an audio source that produces 100 decibels. Okay, well, the thing that had the decibels in it was D, so let's go ahead and put the things in that we need. So we've got 100 equals 10 log. And notice I do a loopy L. That's because I don't want to read that as 101 accidentally. I 10 to the negative 12. Okay. Um, first thing I'm going to do is make this a little easier by canceling out. I've got a 10 and a 100 here. So let's divide the whole thing by 10. Divide that side by 10, divide that side by 10, and I get 10 equals log i over 10 to the negative 12. Now, I always had trouble remembering exactly how to write logarithms. So um, the a trick that I had a student show me, which has somehow managed to stick, so I'm going to tell you two just in case, is the idea that if you have it set up like this, so log base two eight equals x, what you do is you start at the little number, the base number, and you go around in a curly Q and pick things up as you go. So you pick up the two, then the x goes into the exponent or whatever's on the right side goes into the exponent equals eight. So the question is, two to the what power equals eight, x equals three, all right? And I tell you what, it works every time for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my 10 over to the other side so that I can continue with this thing. Now, here's the stumbling block. There's no number in the base, all right? Um, usually there is on the ACT, and in the, but this time they didn't. And that's because this is the common base it is base 10. We can just assume that that's what it is since they didn't tell us any different. All right, so that means I am now going to do my curly Q, go all the way around, and I've got 10 to the 10 equals I over 10 to the negative 12. All right, I need to solve for I, so I'm gonna go ahead and multiply both sides by the denominator, 10 to the negative 12, 10 to the negative 12th. And then when we multiply numbers um, with the same base, the 10 and the 10, the exponents add together. So we will get 10 to the negative two equals i. Double check that that's what they asked for, sound intensity, yes indeed. And so there is my answer. All right, uh, all right, moving right along. The next one is, let's see, it's number 58. So we're just gonna scroll, 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 scroll. Scroll, Wait, oh, scroll too far. There we go, 58. All right, this is 
the same concept. So you can see how like not knowing that one concept hit us twice. Um, all right, so we have 58. Let A and B be positive real numbers such that log A equals three and log B equals two. What is the value of log A squared B? All right, well, let's just go ahead and do the work. So we start with log A equals three. All right, so there's that secret base 10 again. So we're gonna do 10, start at 10 to the third equals A. All right, and I'm just gonna leave it that way. All right, and you'll see why in a minute. And then the next one is log B equals two. No, see, and I started at B because my little 10 was missing. All right, so then we've got 10 squared equals B. All right, now let's get into this situation. So I've got A squared B. All right, so A squared B. So that's gonna be 10 cubed squared times 10 squared. All right, when we have our exponents um, on either side of an apost or apostrophe, uh, a parenthesis, we're gonna multiply them together. So we get 10 to the sixth times 10 squared. And then um, when we're multiplying numbers with the same base, we will add together the exponents. Six plus two is eight, 10 to the eight. So then we know that this mass is actually, wait for my pencil to catch up with me here, is actually log 10 to the eighth. And then what do they want? What is the value? So we're gonna do the, that equals what? All right, once again, hidden base. So we've got 10 to the sixth, I'm sorry, 10 to the x equals 10 to the eighth. Well, what does x equal? x equals eight. There you go. All right, so we need to just know that when there's nothing written, that means that it's an implied or common 10. And then use whatever method you've got to translate your logarithm. Um, you can do it on your calculator. There are identities that you can just, that you might have memorized. This will get you where you need to go. So, um, so this is what I'm going to talk about today. And then we had one more question, and I think it was number 50. This is not about logarithms. So if you are just here for logarithms, then you can get out. Um, she said kindly. All right. This one is about triangles and circles. And I'm going to get my notes so that we can see everything we need. All right. So first of all, there are some rules that are becoming important when we um, when we are dealing with circles. So let's clear the playing field here. And first things first, you know what, hey, let's see if I can do us both a favor and just draw some circles. I don't have to do myself. One, two, one. Still not great, huh? Two. All right, good enough, whatever. Uh, all right, so then we're gonna go over to drawing and let's get some circle facts down. So um, this is about when, because you know, oh, I'm gonna grab the next row. Uh, when you've got two lines that intersect at the center of the circle, the angles on either side are gonna be equal to each other. All right, that's just, that's the way that works. Um, but the question becomes, what if it's not perfectly centered? What if you need to know something else about the relationship of the angles? So here we go. First of all, if we have lines that do this, and then right here is the angle we're talking about. I'm gonna label that theta. Theta generally is a little fancier. It's like got one of those, but I'm just, I'm not here to be fancy. I'm here to do math. So. Um, there's my theta. The, and if this is x, then I know that this, this 
part of the arc here. Um, if this is x, then I know that theta is equal to x over 2. All right, so if they tell me that this measurement is, I don't know, let's change colors, uh, 80 degrees, then I'm going to know that this angle here is 40 degrees. All right, you just cut it in half. All right, next we've got if we have two lines and they give us this information, so it looks like this. All right, not in the center, different values, x measurement over there and y measurement over here, and then they want to know about theta. Then what we do is we do theta equals x plus y over 2. So you're taking the average of the two sides that we know about. Okay, so if x is you know, measures 30 degrees and Y measures 50 degrees, then we would know 30 plus 50 over two, that's 80 divided by two, theta equals 40 degrees, which is the average of those two numbers, all right? It's not necessarily gonna be that simple, but the, I mean the math might be that simple because they're counting on you not knowing that relationship. Okay. And then last, we have the one where the angle is actually outside the circle. All right. So this right here is going to be theta. And then we have x and y. And then um, the, uh, let's see, regretting my spacing here, but what can I do? Uh, my way of finding theta for this will be theta equals x minus y over 2. All right, so again, we are finding that we've got the two sides and we're, we're finding the difference this time. And then, um, let's see, so that means that if x equals, let's go back to 80, and y equals 2, then we can know that that angle right there is going to be 80 minus 2 over 2, which is 78 over 2, which is 39, 39 degrees. Okay. All right. One of those facts is going to be important in what we're doing here. So we have triangle ACD is a right triangle. Which of the following expressions represents the length in centimeters of AC? All right, so let's scroll up and let's clear the field here. You should, and when you're doing this, like draw all over the circle, right? Um, you, this is this, the, when you're taking the test or when you're doing your homework, this is for you. So the more drawing you do, the better. Um, all right, let's see. So let's keep an eye on the prize. We're going to make sure that we are solving for AC and go back to soothing pink. And let's see, what can we learn? So if this is 70 degrees, B is the center of the circle. They told us that. So I know that this is 70, but is that really helpful in this moment? I argue that it is not. Um, the only good information I've got is that that is a right angle. And then over here, well, now we can use one of those identities, right? We've got the angle on the circle and then two lines going that way. How does this angle relate to that degree measurement? It's this top one, right? And that was the one where the degree measurement is just half. So if that is 70, that means that this is 35, all right? And then, so now I'm gonna just redraw this triangle. Say so this is 35, this is my 90 degree. Um, and then I know that the full length, the diameter is 12. All right, they want to know about this side here. So using, I'm going to use this angle. I could find this other angle, right? Um, and I did the first time, but it ends up not being helpful. So I'm not going to do it now. All right, so if we have the uh, let's see, we have one, 
whenever we're dealing with sine, cosine, and tangent, I'm not trying to impress anybody, and you don't want to make a silly mistake at, at this point, right? So let's see what we have. We have the hypotenuse. And we have the one across from the angle. So that is the opposite. Um, and so that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. And I really do write all of this when I'm taking the test. It takes an extra second. And that's a good thing because it keeps my brain um, from doing anything too silly. And it also like flipping them happens to students all the time. Uh, and it also kind of helps me feel like I know what I'm doing, you know, like you're taking a test and it's really, it's very tense. Um, and so writing down a formula like this, that just, you could just rattle it off, soothing, right? And soothing is good when you're in a stressful situation. All right, so we have sine of 35 equals 12. Oh, nope, see, you see what I was about to do there? The opposite is X, not 12. And the hypotenuse is 12. All right. And then if we're solving for x, we're just going to multiply both sides by 12. So we get 12 sine 35. All right. Let's remember 12 sine 35, 12 sine 35. There you are. And so we have answer J. Beautiful. All right. So those are the three um, math concepts I wanted to review on the ACT from December of 22. And if you have any questions or comments or concerns, I would love to hear about it. So feel free to email me at testprep at flamingotutoring.com or comment on this video. Thank you.